Hare Krishna. Question Why did Bhishma and the other elders stay silent when Draupadi was being disrobed? Answer They did not stay silent exactly. They opposed, but they did not oppose forcefully enough. They there is a contextual reason and there is a transcendental reason for the uh, silence of Bhishma and <clears throat> for others we will discuss now Bhishma when Draupadi was brought into the assembly he was dragged in at that time the whole activity itself was heinous to <clears throat> nobody is meant to be dishonored like this what to speak of uh, honorable, <coughs> honorable, uh, pr uh, honorable princess being dragged like this it was it was not just a princess. It was, she was born a princess. She was a queen now, queen of the world emperor. So it was horrendous. But um, somehow the Pandavas had lost everything, including themselves and their wife. And then Duryodhana was goaded by Dushasana, Karana, and Shakuni, and he wanted to dishonor the Pandavas in every possible way. And that's how Draupadi was uh, dragged over there. So at that time, Draupadi did uh, try to hold on to a technicality and she said that <clears throat> if Yudhishthir had gambled himself first, then how could he have gambled me afterward? If he was not his own master, then how was he my master? So Draupadi was trying to salvage the situation to prevent something heinous uh, from happening, from happening going further by holding on to technicality, and she raised this question before the Kuru elders, and Bhishma, he was the eldest among everyone present over there, and actually, in terms of political position, the king Dhritarashtra was supposed to was the was the most powerful, and he was supposed to speak, but he stayed silent because he had that greed for the throne and he wanted to displace the Pandavas and he wanted so he was definitely he was actually delighted and although normally he concealed his partisanship on that particular occasion during the uh, assembly during the Asat Sabha during uh, the gambling match and the events thereafter his partiality and his, uh, to some extent, evil nature did come out. So he stayed silent because he wanted the Pandavas to be dishonored and he thought converse, by doing that, I and my sons would be honored. Now, Vidura protested vehemently, but Vidura did not have any influential political position. He was the younger brother and he was also a stepbrother, born of a maid servant. So he could only protest and he, he told various anecdotes, uh, precedents from scripture about how if a victim comes, if a person, victim, if a victim comes to a, a royal assembly seeking justice and that victim is not, uh, victims uh, is not provided justice in the whole assembly and especially those who give decision in that assembly will suffer grievously. And he, in this way, tried to reason based on scripture as well as morality to try to make the assembly see sense, but the Trashtra remained uh, adamantly silent and uh, certainly the <coughs> Duryodhana was actually instigating it, so he had no uh, regard for Vidura's words. Now Bhishma specifically if we see, he told Draupadi that the question that you have asked, it is very difficult to answer because at one level a woman always remains uh, remains uh, connected with her husband not exactly as a property in terms of a possession uh, it's a person a person is definitely more than a possession but yes a woman is always under the protection of a man so a, a wife is under the protection of the husband always but such a situation was unprecedented where a husband had lost himself and then gambled his wife afterwards so Normally, if a position is there, a person gambles the position first, and then afterward the person gamble oneself. 
So it was his extreme, it was his great esteem for Draupadi that even the thought of gambling, Draupadi did not enter Yudhishthir's mind before. It was only after he had gambled everyone, including himself, that Shakuni suggested this and when he suggested this, everyone was horrified, even Yudhishthir was horrified. But in the desperation to try to recover what he had lost, Yudhishthir gambled. So now Draupadi, so Bhishma said that this is an unprecedented situation and because there are two principles involved, which is important, I cannot decide. And <coughs> Vikarna and Vidura, Vikarna was one of the Kaurava brothers who was not uh, as evil, who did not share the evil disposition of the uh, Kauravas. He objected and he said that the whole gap match is null and void because Vidishtir was uh, was compelled to gamble because uh, instead of Duryodhana gambling, it was Chakuni who played the dice for Duryodhana, and because Yudhishthira had already gambled himself before Draupadi, before uh, before gambling Draupadi, so he could not have possibly gambled. So he, he said, not only should Draupadi not be considered to be one over, but rather the whole gambling match should be this particular null and void. But then Karana opposed that strongly, and the whole assembly went into disruption afterwards. So the point is, in the context, Bhishma, we see from the contextual perspective, he got caught in a Niyamagra. Niyamagra means sticking to the letter of the law while forgetting the spirit. Now, ultimately, the point of saying that a woman is the a woman belongs to a, a wife belongs to the husband. The point of that is for the to protect the wife, to protect the woman. The point of that is not that the woman should be uh, treated like a chattel and pushed here and there or exploited. But the point of that rule, or in fact of any rule, is to protect those who are weak. So the spirit of the law is protection, but the, in the letter of the law, the spirit got lost over here. So dharma, one of the consistent themes of the Mahabharata is that dharma is guhya and it is not easily understandable. So Bhishma got caught in the technicality because he overlooked the broad spirit of the law that uh, how can a woman, a royal woman like this, a uh, chaste wife, a queen be dishonored. That spirit of protection got lost in the technicality of uh, who, who was the possessor and who was not at a particular time. But so this is the contextual reason. Uh, now beyond that of course there is also the point that because Bhishma, Drona, they uh, they had taken they had committed themselves to abide by the rule of the kuru king because they had affiliated themselves with the kuru king so they could not directly at that particular point oppose now uh, that that affiliation had come because of various circumstances or whatever uh, that is a different issue but the point is they because of their affiliation over there they couldn't they voiced the protest but they did not forcefully intervene over there. Now from the transcendental perspective, this whole pastime is enacted to demonstrate a truth. And that truth is that no matter uh, how many uh, how protected we may be in this world, we may the the world's vicissitudes, the world's events can turn in such a unpredictable and unfortunate way that despite having many protectors, one may be rendered uh, defenseless. And as it is revealed that ultimately we have only one protector and that is Krishna. So this is the transcendental purpose of the whole pastime. And everything right from Yudhishthir is uh, losing his, uh, losing his uh, self-mastery and gambling to such a such a extra, uh, such a terrible extent to Bhishma's silence. It uh, and uh, all that is ultimately we understand uh, part of the Lord's plan for demonstrating that you know, a woman who has a powerful husband as a protector, she is fortunate. Draupadi had five husbands for her protectors, and she was not in some secluded. Uh, uh, place where she was being uh, ravished by some brutish person. She was in the public assembly, in the presence of her five husbands who were meant to be protectors, in the presence of elders who were meant to be protectors. And even in such a situation, she was reduced to a situation of defenselessness and helplessness. And in that situation, 
Krishna protected her. So the whole past time, rather than focusing on the technicality of who behaved in what way and why, we can focus on the transcendental principle that was demonstrated by Krishna through this past time. That though we may make arrangements for having protection in this world, but still we should not let ourselves get blinded to the fact that ultimately we have no protector apart from Krishna. And that Kunti, uh, that Draupadi is helpless and oh, desperate surrender to Krishna and Krishna's reciprocation. That is the purpose towards which this whole pastime is uh, orchestrated. Thank you. Very much.